morning, Sanglet Saints. Glad we could be together on this second Sunday of Advent as uh, we begin to prepare our hearts and our minds for coming to Christmas during this four week season of Advent and preparation. As you can see, there um, the poinsettias are out, and if you'd like to give a poinsettia in memory or honor someone, please fill that out and put it in the offering plate. And then you can take the poinsettia home after the Christmas Eve service. Please wait till after the service. Vicki <laughs> um, has an announcement to make real quick. signed up. There's just been a lot, a lot of gifts going out on top of those 45 Thanksgiving baskets you did. So Vicki has everything right out there. You'll see it in the Northex if you'd like to give a Christmas present. And Jennifer has an announcement. I do. Good morning. Good morning. Um, there are still some Advent Family Countdown bags out in the Northex. If you haven't grabbed one of those yet, they are on the table under the TV. Also, the Christmas wreaths are here. If you ordered one, they're down in the gym. They're in alphabetical order, and your order form is attached to the wreath. Um, if you didn't order one, but you still would like to, I do have a few extras for sale, so you can see me about those. And then the last announcement is our youth Christmas party is today at 1 o'clock. So 5th grade through 12th grade, um, any youth that want to come and have some fun, you're welcome to join us. And we have plenty of Advent devotionals. We purchase Advent devotionals for each family. And they're the ones with the really pretty blue cover. And they're in the welcome table. They're all out in the narthex. Please um, take one home. And if you have, want to share one with a friend or family, please feel free to do that. We want to get those. And uh, they're only good if you use them, right? Um, and also, today is our congregational meeting. So we ask our members to stay following this worship service. The so, um, annual report is in the narthex. And you can also view it online. And we need your input as we need to approve a budget for 2022 and elect officers for 2022. So thank you all for your participation in that. I believe that's all the announcements. All right, let us take a moment to prepare our hearts and minds for worship.
invite you to please stand for the brief word of confession and forgiveness on this second Sunday of Advent. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the Lord of Israel. Our gathering hymn will be verses 1 and 2 of Joy to the World. No.
John the Baptist calls all people to prepare the Lord's way, for the kingdom of heaven is near. Bless us as we light the candles on the street. Baptize us with the fire of your spirit, that we may be a light shining in the darkness, welcoming others as Christ has welcomed us. For he is our light and our salvation. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Good morning. Good morning. Um, so today is the second Sunday of Advent, and we have two candles lit, although one of them appears to be struggling a little bit. But that's okay, we all struggle a little bit. Um, so that first candle was the candle of hope. We talked about hope last week. So the second candle, which is doing quite well, is the candle of peace. So when we think about peace, what do we think about? What does peace mean? What does it mean? Happy with a job. Oh, well, aren't very well done. We think of a job, and a job is a symbol for peace that we use in the church. What else? Yeah. We really pray for world peace, don't we? That, that the fighting would end, that the violence would end, that people would get along. Um, have you ever heard your mom or dad say they just want peace and quiet? <laughs> yeah. So sometimes peace is kind of that stillness, that and we long for that peace. We long for world peace. Um, and we know that Jesus came, or he is coming at Christmas time, he is coming as the Prince of Peace. And so he came. But do we have that kind of peace in our world? We don't, do we? Our, our daily life is not filled with what we think of as peace. There are still people fighting. There's there, is, there are problems in homes and in families. There's problems in our city and in our world. So we look around and we think, well, Jesus brought peace, but where is it? Where is the peace? So in the, in, when we talk about peace and we talk about God, we're thinking like that duh. Peace is a little bit different. It doesn't mean that the world won't have problems because they're sin. The world is going to have problems. It's going to. So the peace that we're talking about is that peace that passes all understanding. That peace that comes from God and is in us and it completes us. That's the peace that we can seek. And that's the peace that Jesus brings. And that's the peace that we have. That peace doesn't mean the problems will go away. But it means that we don't face those problems alone. That God is with us and God is in us and we can feel the peace that comes from him and we can share that peace with our neighbors who might not know it already so as we go through this season we of course pray for world peace and we've had pray for peace in our homes but we also want to recognize that that real peace that peace that comes from God is there for us each and every day in each and every situation that we face. We love you and we're so glad you're all here today. <coughs> Our first reading comes from Malachi chapter 3 verses 1 through 4. See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, indeed he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi, and refine them like gold and silver until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord, as in the days of old and as in former years. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. God. Our response and reading will be done by a whole verse. Blessed are you, Lord, the God of Israel. You have come to your people and set them free. You have been raised up for us, the mighty Savior, born in the house of your servant David. Through your holy prophets, you promised of old 
to save us from our enemies, from, from the hands of all who hate us, to show mercy to our forebears and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath you swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous before you all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way, to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to hide our feet into the way of peace. Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip, ruler of the region of Iturea and Triconius, and Lysanias, ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. So good to see so many folks today. A lot of folks are coming back for our congregational meeting, so that's great. We're all in this together, so we got to have these congregational meetings. So we got a budget for next year. We need that, and also elect officers, so we appreciate everyone's participation. So we're preparing for next year as we have our congregational meeting. And the season of Advent is a season of preparation. And we all know a bit about preparing. Preparing to take a test, you study your class notes, you read your assigned chapters, you prepare by studying to get ready for the test. You prepare to cook, you study your recipe, your lasagna recipe, you soak the pasta, you chop the vegetables, brown the meat, you do all the things to get ready for that, that recipe. You prepare for a trip by packing, confirming your reservations, your routes, your pickup and drop off times, you get everything ready beforehand. But preparing the way for the Lord, preparing the way for the Lord, that sounds a bit difficult. Well, in ancient times, if the king or the emperor or the Lord were to visit your, your city, your village, it was a big deal. Believe me, the emperor just didn't drop in unannounced. It was a big deal. The roads would be fixed. The roads would be leveled. The roads would be swept. The street children and the homeless get rounded up and pushed out of the center city so everything can look clean when the emperor or the lord comes through. Colorful banners are hung. Maybe even an entire new plaza is built or a new building is built to recognize that this is the date that this dignitary came, this emperor, this king, this queen, this lord came to visit, to honor the visitary and dignitary. So how do we modern followers of Jesus prepare for the arrival of our Lord? How do we modern followers of Jesus prepare for Jesus? As the saying goes, imitation is the highest form of flattery. Imitation is the highest form of flattery. Imitatio Christi is a Latin phrase meaning imitation of Christ. Imitatio Christi is an attempt to live and to act as Christ lived and acted. We also call this Christian discipleship. 
acting like Christ as a way of life. Orthopraxy is the practice of living your faith. Orthopraxy, living it, practicing it. Many are actually turned off by a church that just argues about who's saved and who's not, who's in and who's out, who's orthodox, who's thinking the right way, who's following the latest celebrity pastor. Jesus was much, much more concerned about doing the right thing. If you look at the writings and the stories of Jesus, he's much more concerned about doing the right thing. Remember the famous story of the Good Samaritan? The Good Samaritan does the right thing. He didn't think the right way. He wasn't Jewish. He wasn't Orthodox. He was an outsider. He was even considered a heretic. But he did the right thing, and Jesus honors him and says, we are to do likewise, to love our neighbors as ourselves. So a good Samaritan sees a man in need on the side of the road. He doesn't think somebody should help that man. This is terrible. This is outrageous. Somebody should do something. He stops and he helps him. He bandages and he cares for them. The good Samaritan helped the man in need. He imitated Christ by his actions. And Christ comes to us to love. And love in action is a way of imitating Christ. Love in practice, a way of imitating Christ. Preparing for Jesus, Advent waiting, can be starting our day with our Advent devotions, centering ourselves in prayer, knowing that God is with us and God loves us, and filling us so that we can go and be a sign of love for others. Doing those acts of kindness and love together as Christ-like actions is imitating Christ. This past Tuesday, as you know, Monday was whatever, it's Cyber Shopping Day, and then Tuesday is Cyber Giving Day, Giving Tuesday. Well, I'm on a lot of newsletter lists, and you know, I follow a lot of things that are going on, social action things that are going on in our community and the world, so I think I received over 100 requests to give on Giving Tuesday. It was just crazy. They kept coming in one after another after another. And I support giving good causes. I support generosity. You know that. St. Luke exists because you give, because I give, because we all give together. Those who come before us have given that this congregation may be the wonderful place that it is. We give. It's a spiritual discipline. It's part of our faith. But even more important than making a one-time electronic donation is to have an emotional and relational um, connection to those we give with. That we're working together with these gifts. And that's what Vicki worked so hard and our social ministry worked so hard with our angel tree. That all those gifts that you are going to be giving and all those gift cards that we'll be giving go to children here in Memphis. They go to children that have a connection to St. Luke or Peace Lutheran Church or that we're made aware of right here in our own community. That Preparing for Jesus by acts of love and acts of kindness and acts of mercy. And it's not a one-time event. It's not just one click and we've given it, but it is a lifestyle. For the people of antiquity, the visit of an emperor would have been a once-in-a-lifetime activity. It would have been something they would remember the rest of their life. It was a grand day. But then the next day, they return to the ordinary hardships and drudgery of first century life. Jesus offers a way of living that is filled with grace, filled with service, fulfilled with love, not for one day, but for a lifetime. Jesus offers a community of faith with prayers and support for one another. Advent may be a season, but discipleship is a lifetime. Prepare the way for the Lord, make, make his pathway straight. Such a grand announcement comes down to simple everyday acts of love and charity. Speaking kindly about our neighbor, loving God, loving yourself, remembering the teaching of Paul, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, as we prepare for Christmas and the birth of Jesus, help us to live our faith in the small ways, in the small acts of kindness, the small words of mercy, understanding that life is difficult and we all struggle. Help us to support one another as Jesus has called us to love each other 
as we love God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I invite you to sing um, our song of following Christ. We'll be singing verses 1, 2, and 3 of O Come, Come, Emmanuel. <laughs> Jen, 
Ashley, Allie, and Toby. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We ask for comfort and guidance for the family and friends of Becky Glisson, the mother-in-law of Joe <coughs> Williamson for her death, Sue, Clay, Patty A, Betty S, Anita, Sandra, Mary B. Support for friends and family finding acceptance as LGBTQ plus children of God. Protection and guidance against COVID virus variants for doctors, nurses, and all healthcare workers. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We offer praises today for Gloria Mudwood, Sunday School teachers, Monday counters, worship service volunteers, food pantry volunteers, and happy birthdays to Bill, Dutch, Johnny, Lynn, Emma, Zach, Charlotte, Ira, Jill, Leslie, Noel, and happy anniversary to Tim and Marta, Paul and Johnny, and Philip and Sammy. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We offer now the prayers of our hearts and our minds. Wow. Hear us, O oh God. The Your mercy is great. God of new life, you come among us in the places we least expect. Receive these prayers in those of our hearts. We pray in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. You may be seated for the offering. During our time of COVID restrictions, we're not passing the offering plate. It will remain near the entrance there. You may um, place a check in the offering plate as you come and go, or you may give electronically at the St. Luke's website, or there is a uh, code on the back of the book. Thank you for your faithfulness and your giving during these challenging times. And we're glad to see that the Bell Choir will be. Uh, we got one choir that's going, right? <laughs> Great.
invite the congregation to please stand for the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and our duty and our joy <laughs> that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will make all things new. In the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Do this for the remembrance of you. 